Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. For a while now, I've had some ideas for unorthodox paint strategies rattling around in my head, and I think it's time I tried them out. And stick around to the end to see what the EOB Complete community has been up to. Sometimes I get a little sick of the old base coat wash highlight method of mini painting. It works, it's efficient, and it's a fail-safe strategy to attack any model with. I recently did a whole week of this to bring my high school Necron army up to snuff. And when I paint, here on YouTube every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central, I push this to the max to paint to my highest ability. But sometimes I wonder if there isn't something more out there. Sometimes I just want to say to hell with tradition and try out some crazy ideas. I want to get a little experimental. I have three ideas for painting hacks and, if they work, should make for some simple and awesome paint schemes. But before I can put these ideas onto minis, I have to find the perfect test subjects. Now to be a great mini painter, it's important to ABT. Always be testing. And don't be that guy who's too scared to mess up a mini, so you test stuff on green army men, or worse yet, spoons. You're not going to try that hard on an army man because you don't have an attachment to that mini. You will grow so much faster as a painter if you just try things out on your precious minis. Painting new minis, especially weird stuff that puts you outside of your comfort zone, will make you better. It worked for me. While I looked through my pile of shame, I found the perfect minis for this project. An Age of Sigmar Stormcast Eternal from the Steelhearts Champion box, an easy to build Warhammer 40k Space Marine Intercessor, and an Age of Sigmar easy to build Nighthaunt Glaive Wraith Stalker. These three should provide fun test subjects for my experiments. My first idea is to use speckles to paint a mini. This is where you use a toothbrush or an airbrush to throw hundreds of tiny dots of paint onto a mini. My second idea is to use sponging to create an easy and effective camouflage on a model. And last, I want to hijack the classic Zenithal Prime to get a really dramatic two-tone look. I'm really excited to give these ideas a try. With my models picked out, it's time to get painting. I love the look of these Age of Sigmar Nighthaunt Glaive Wraith Stalkers. The first thing I did was I gave it a prime with some Steinal Res Black Primer through my airbrush, but you could also do this with a rattle can. Then it was time to get spattering. I watered down some Games Workshop Eshin Grey and took a toothbrush and began to fling some paint dots onto the mini. Remember that the watered down paint will dry a little darker than it looks wet. After the gray, I spattered on a little bit of Vallejo Sick Green. Then I switched to the airbrush so I had a little more control and I started to spatter on some watered down Vallejo Stonewall Gray, the color of kings. I kept this to the highest parts of the mini. I was liking what I was seeing, but it lacked color, so I spattered on some more of the green onto the cloak. Then I used some washes to further tint the two halves of his spooky cloak. I used Army Painter Green Tone for the undercloak, and for the upper cloak, I used some Army Painter Light Tone, which is an orangey yellow wash. These washes were a nice touch because they're transparent and let my speckles shine through really well. It tinted more than shaded the model. I was happy with my cloak, so I decided I wanted something nice and bright for the base. So I applied some P3 Sanguine Highlight, which is a darker red to the base. This contrasted nicely with the green cloak. I also used this on the handle of his spear. The fewer paints I add to my palette, the fewer colors are fighting for attention on the mini. For the top of his spear, I applied some classic Games Workshop Lead Belcher, the one and done gunmetal for all occasions. Now onto his flesh, or lack thereof. I applied some Games Workshop Sotek Blue, which stands out proudly against the other colors on the model. And I even used it on the weapon to add some verdigris. The bones popped, but did not have enough contrast, so I applied a highlight of Games Workshop Lothorn Blue. By then, the base coat on the base had dried, so I gave it a dry brushing with some P3 Carnal Pink. This worked amazing, because there's so much lovely texture sculpted into the base already that the dry brush brought it out beautifully. But once again, I could use a little more contrast, so I gave the whole base a wash with some Games Workshop Red Wash Karabrog Crimson. Now the face and hands could use a little bit more pop, so I applied a 50-50 mix of Lothorn Blue and White and did some further highlights. At this point, the model was finished, and the only thing left was to paint the rim of the base black. This model took a while before it started to look like anything. This is sometimes referred to as the ass phase of the model. That time where you're second guessing your paint scheme, yourself, your ability to paint, and your place in the universe. Once it was done, I was feeling a little bummed out, but when I walked away, I noticed that it was actually looking good from a distance, which is surprising. 
Typically, even a great paint job will look like mush the further you view the model, but the simplicity of the paint job and the brightness of the colors make this model pop even from across the table. It pulled me out of my self-doubt and made me feel a bit vindicated. I'm a 40k fanboy and a Space Marine player, so I was most looking forward to painting this model. The first thing I did was, you guessed it, primed it black with my airbrush and some Steinol Res black primer. You could also use a rattle can to get the job done as well. Then I prepared my instrument, a tweezer with a piece of foam in it, and to avoid hand fatigue I rubber banded it shut. I dipped my foam into some Vallejo model color reflective green and began sponging this onto the model. About halfway through I switched to some Vallejo model color chocolate brown because this will be a camouflage and I wanted it to look the part. So now he's half brown and half green. I sponged some brown onto his green bits and some green onto his brown bits, making sure to leave a little bit of the under color showing. Then it was time to add some lighter colors. First I used some Vallejo model color green brown and did some much lighter sponging on this so that the patches were smaller and didn't cover too much of my undercoats. Then it was time for some Vallejo sick green and this was the final color to bring the camouflage together. I did the same thing as with the light brown, keeping the sponging smaller. At this point I thought this was looking good, not great. It needed a little bit of panel lining. For this I could have used a wash or carefully thinned down a black paint and used a really fine brush, but I decided to try out a grey tone pen with a brush tip. This worked flawlessly. It goes on strong but it gets a little lighter when it's dry, and it made quick work of adding some darkness to the lines of his armor. And because it's a pen I didn't have to refresh a paintbrush every few strokes. Now my armor is done and I have a new tool for my arsenal. It's time for his weapons, so I painted his bolt gun and under armor, not sponsored, with the, some Games Workshop lead belcher. Then I used some Games Workshop Death Guard green for his decorations, and this color is surprisingly awful for a base paint. It took lots of coats to get good coverage. Two thin coats, yeah right! It did make for a nice accent color, and it made the weapons and accessories pop while still making sense for a tactical camouflage marine. Finally I dotted his eyes with some Lawthorn blue and I also used this on the purity seal because I'm a rebel. The blue also went on the screen of his Auspex scanner as well. I washed the metal bits with some Army Painter Strong Tone and then the model was finished, it was time for his base. I gave it a coat of chocolate brown and after that was dry I gave it a nice dry brushing with some Vallejo green brown. The only thing left was to paint the rim of the base black. I have in the past very carefully painted a classic camouflage pattern and I thought it looked pretty decent, but I had an inkling that sponging could give me a great effect with very little effort, and this model proves my hypothesis correct. The sponging worked great and gave me some basic highlights and shading to boot, because the sponge favors the raged edges and couldn't reach the recesses. I used green and brown and dark green and dark brown to achieve this look, but I bet I could mix it up to get lots of different camos like desert or arctic. And right before I paint this third model, it's time for a PP break, a Patreon plug. If you enjoy our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there you'll get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what I paint live here on YouTube, extra live streams every week, and more. With that out of the way, let's get back to the painting. Some people say these guys are just space marines, but I think they look different enough. I broke from the norm and gave this model a prime with some light grey from Vallejo. You could also prime with a rattle can. Now to get crazy. I'm spraying some Games Workshop Mephiston Red as a base coat, and then from above I sprayed some P3 Cygnus Yellow. I'm spraying with my trusty airbrush, but you could probably pull off a very similar effect with a yellow and red rattle can. But if you want the super fine control, the airbrush is king. With my base coat applied, I quickly gave it a matte varnish to protect the delicate airbrush layers. Then I began selectively adding a red wash, specifically Army Painter Red Tone, to key areas of the model I wanted to add more contrast to, like the rivets and folds of his shoulders and the creases in his chiseled physique of his suit of armor. Then to pick out his weapons I base coated them with some Vallejo Magic Blue, which is about as bright a blue as exists on planet Earth. This contrasts nicely with the yellow and red, making them both pop more. The great thing about these easy to build figures is it can make sub-assemblies unnecessary, just remove stuff to get underneath it. I wanted the cloth parts to be a little less vibrant than his hammer, so I used some Vallejo Ultramarine Blue, which is a little bit darker. Then I applied more red shade to the accents of his weapons and banner, and then some blue shade to all the blue parts of the model. It took two coats to get as dark as I wanted it. Now the model is finished. 
and super eye-wateringly vibrant, so I decided to go very dull on the base. I glooped on some Vallejo Chocolate Brown, and while that was wet, I worked in some Vallejo Beastie Brown into areas to give a more natural mottled look. Then I broke out the sponge again and applied some Vallejo Green Brown. After that, I sponged on some Vallejo Model Color Reflective Green, and at this point, I still thought the base was too bright, so I gave it a black wash. The only thing left to do was, say it with me now, paint the rim of the base black. For this paint job, I wanted to hijack the classic technique of a Zenithal highlight, which is when you spray white from directly above on a black primed model to create a basic simulation of light. Replacing the black with red and the white with yellow made for a super striking and fast paint job. And the emphasis is definitely on fast. This technique is positively speedy. If you want to speed paint an army, this is a solid way to do it. Especially armies that are mostly one color, like Necrons, Stormcast Eternals, and maybe even Tyranids. Well, I'm pretty happy with this experiment, but I would love a second pair of eyes on these models. What are we doing? All right, so here are yeah. the three models. There you go. Yeah, oh my God, this guy. I really love him. Is there any standouts between the three? Um, I mean, the blue and the <laughs> orange. That's that's really really striking. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on the glaive wraith? I mean, I like the I like the texturing on his uh, his little cloak. Looks nice. All right. So if you had to bang, marry, or ki and kill one these models, ooh, bang, um, marry, kill. I mean, I'm gonna bang him. <laughs> I'm gonna bang orange uh, Sigmar the Marine. Stormcast. Stormcast. I think I'll uh, marry Primaris Marine, and uh, I think I'm gonna kill the Glaive Wraith. Mm. Well, I guess it makes sense to kill the bad guy. <laughs> or is the yeah. Space Marine the bad guy? Mm. That's a good dun, question. Dun, dun. <laughs> so what do y'all think? Which paint job was your favorite? And what's your bang, marry, kill of the three paint jobs? Let me know in the comments below, but now it's time for EOB Complete. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it on Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A custom Demon Prince of Nurgle by Karsf, some Kitbash D&D Leshy by Pat, a Vintage Vampire Lord by Ugjamani, a Primaris Outrider by Art of Blake, a Gun Toten Dreadnought by Ferio Von Serfio, some Orc Warbikers by Ryogonox, some Chaos Marines by Orange, a Chaotic Icon Bearer by Dark Castle Miniatures, a Necron Overlord by Tristman175, a squad of Primaris Eliminators by Just Make Stuff, an Abaddon the Despoiler by Brett S, some Smelly Poxwalkers by Ikelos Homework Volume 101, a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought by Koravan, a Tau XV88 Broadside Battlesuit by Thunder Knight, a Luke Skywalker by Pirate Junk, and a Necron Royal Warden by Spoxclock. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on a mini, and all of you should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project, and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us, and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing. Alright, is that... Yeah, there you go. Was that good enough, or I don't, I don't know. know.